Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night at the local time. First we're going to start with Kherson direction we got lots of very interesting updates and details from this territory. As you know the Russians still haven't managed to force the Ukrainians to step back from the Russian bank of the river. The Ukrainians have uh, digged in deeper in Krynki direction. Today we got another video from the area on the south of Lvov. On this video we can see how the Russian anti-tank uh, soldier was trying to destroy the Ukrainian positions with anti-tank missile. The Ukrainians established a small fortification area in the uh, sank boats in this area. So this is the first geolocation confirmation of, Russia, of Ukraine control not just in the vicinity of Krynki or on the north of Krynki but also along the shore and bank uh, on the south of Lvov and on the south of Tyaginka. When talking about Krynki itself we haven't received uh, anything from this area just a small uh, photograph or just a small scene of explosions and fire on the north of Krynki in the area of the tree lines and the forest which confirms that the Russians during the previous night and they tried to attack the Ukrainian positions with different types of weapon trying to maybe destroy their evacuation zones or let's say small ammo depots in this area. Now we are moving further to Podstepne. From this area we also got a video from the Ukrainian side how the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking the Russian infantry along the trenches with FPV drones. This video confirms that Ukrainians still control these territories, still located in this area and now they try to develop their positions and the first thing they need to do is to attack the Russian forces in the trenches with FPV drones. So this is the thing that they are doing right now. And now we are moving to islands. Uh, very interesting updates are coming from the islands on the southwest of Kherson. And according to this video map, as you can see, I have updated the map. And we got a lot of details, a lot of um, videos uh, published by the Russian uh, so forces. On this video, we see how the Russians FPV drone forces were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian so forces in this area, which confirms the, the Ukrainian control over these territories. Furthermore, most of the Western mappers also have updated their map. Sure Showing that this territory was retaken by the Ukrainians during the clashes of previous days. So, uh, as I understand, after the front line uh, front lines in the vicinity of Podstepne and Krynki were stabilized, and currently the Ukrainians move to the second phase of operation for establishing the foothold. I'm talking about the art establishing uh, attempt to establish artillery superiority. I'm not sure whether the Ukrainians are able to do this, or, but at least they're trying to do this right now. Only after this. I think the Ukrainians will continue and now the Ukrainians change their focus on the islands on the end of Dnipro river. So as I understand the next days and the next, next weeks the Ukrainians will try to attack the Russian positions along the islands trying to return control or establish control over this territory and to get as close as possible to the Russian positions in Gola Pristin and Kardashenka. So basically the Ukrainians will try to make the same thing as they managed to uh, implement uh, in the vicinity of Krynki. Because we see this area they captured first they captured the islands and that allowed them to get very close to the village itself So they will try to do the same on the south The Russians from their side continue bombardments of uh, Birislav and uh, I, I, It's another uh, day of another bombardments and I'm asking me why the Russians are so focused in this area because uh, since the beginning of uh, Let's say bombardments of this area. We saw a lot of like videos a lot of geolocations with the usage of of 500 but still we haven't received like a normal answer why the russians are bombing were bombing this territory maybe there are like a very heavy concentration of Ukrainian forces or maybe the russians have information about uh, possible upcoming um, like plans from the ukrainian forces to attack kahovka nova kahovka lubimovka or something like this uh, more un another interesting and more interesting updates are coming from let's say Donetsk direction probably we, we should start these updates from Vladimir Putin according to information we have after the meeting and visit of Kazakhstan the Russian was the, uh, the Russian president Putin was in Kazakhstan he has a meeting with Takayev and after the meeting with him uh, Rush, the Russian president and the minister of defense of Russian Federation arrived in Rostov-on-Don and they had a meeting uh, with uh, the head of general staff with the minister of defense with uh, uh, with uh, Shoigu and uh, if you remember the last time Putin visit uh, this Rostov on Don was on the 20th of October during the uh, most fierce battles for uh, Terikon for that area after uh, that um, visit the Russians managed to establish control by the way over Terikon now he arrived one more time in the general staff probably they were talking about 
more things and as i understand uh putin brought some news maybe the final order so maybe he uh, came to inspect the situation anyway as i understand the russians are planning to intensify their actions during the next few days and of course uh, his visit also is was connected with the situation on the north of Avdiivka. obviously as you can see we have a lot of like icons from this territory and uh, a lot of sources a lot of mappers have already updated their map showing this territory at least in the gray zone or at least under russian control the thing that we know for sure that um, the russians we don't have like uh, the geolocated videos the only thing we have is some telegram posts and messages but the russians are saying a lot of different uh, like um, uh, resources independent resources confirmed that currently the russians managed to answer stepova and that there are very heavy clashes between ukrainian forces and the russian forces in this small village if it's true of course as i understand maybe within the next day we're going to receive um, the final confirmation of establishing control over this village and maybe putin arrived in rostov on don because the minister of defense uh, already received this piece of information and he provided him personally that the russians managed to capture the village and that avdiivka news is th tight th uh, tightening now we're moving to avdiivka because we got also very interesting video from the forces of 110th mechanized brigade of course i can't tell you for sure whether this video is correct right and this is not like the prisoners of war that the russians captured and for them to make a video maybe uh, maybe this is the real video who knows but uh, the thing is that this video appeared is these days on this video one more time we can see the forces 110 mechanized brigade this is the base this is the most like the uh, stronghold brigade in this area and the guys were talking about uh, the current situation and this is you know the common pattern on every single front line on the solidar there was 128 probably brigade and every time when we about to see collapse of this or that front line the ukrainians forces start publishing videos about the best situation on the ground so but uh, this soldier uh, told a lot of things but i mentioned i noted two the most important the first one is that ukrainian commanders still try to send every single day more and more soldiers ukrainian soldiers to storm tirikon to storm the uh, landfill with the purpose to return control and the soldiers this guy is saying was, was saying that uh, hundreds of ukrainian soldiers were already killed during that storming process this is the first thing he didn't understand what is going on and the second thing he was surprised and this surprised me as well that he told us that during the previous nights the ukrainian officers ukrainian commanders completely evacuated and, and left of Dievka. so there are no longer officers generals colonels majors captains lieutenants on the territory of Dievka. currently there are just infantry the infantry that is controlled by the ukrainian officers in the distance let's say somewhere from konstantinovka or maybe somewhere from maturity vatanam so the entire stronghold is under responsibility of a regular infantry of ukraine forces so as, as we understand the situation is very bad and furthermore of course we understand why the ukrainians are doing this because it's so simple it's not uh, artyomovsk it's not bakhmut with significant number of settlements and towns around the, the city and uh, there was a lot of clashes to establish control to encircle the only thing the russians need to do is to take control over this um, line like uh, to capture Berdychi uh, to capture Stepova not uh, the Russians don't need even to capture entire Berdychi just uh, part of this village and this is going to be the end the game over of Avdiivka because uh, the distance between the Russian positions let's say in Berdychi or Stepova and the Russian positions in Vadiana the distance would be around just nine kilometers and every single road will be under very uh, under fire but the the biggest problem if the Russians are able to do this is that Ukrainians will lose any artillery support in this sector this one so everything that located in this let's say white cloud will be uh, uh, without any artillery support I'm not talking about the uh, infantry mortars I'm talking about let's say m777 holders old Soviet holders like Mstabi because to attack to support Ukrainians in this area the uh, the Ukrainians need to bring very close their own artillery systems that will be destroyed by the Russian Lancet or new drone Skypil. So the situation is very difficult and maybe uh, the battle for Avdiivka will be finished even before the new year comes.
Uh, when talking about Bakhmut direction, we also got some updates. The Russians continue their offensive operation on the line between Bogdanovka and Yahidne. And today, the Ukrainian sources also published some video confirmations uh, how they were bombing and attacking the Russian forces using FPV drones, which confirms the Russian progress in this area. That the Russians established control over this territory, the Russians continue advancing. When talking about Klishevka, uh, the Russians yesterday reported that the Ukrainians left the village and so on, but uh, this morning they published the video how the Russians were hunting the Ukrainian forces in the village with FPV drones, how they were bombing them. So basically this village um, is not uh, in the gray zone. Maybe some part of this village in the vicinity of the railways um, is in the gray zone, but most of the village is still under Ukraine control and there are still very heavy clashes. So this is the situation. Interesting updates are coming from the northern flank of Bakhmut from the village by the name of Vasikovka. Today we got another geolocated video how the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian position positions on the let's say on the Ukrainian side of these small lakes and rivers so this video this video confirms that probably uh, as a result of clashes for the eastern part of Vasikovka that part probably was captured by the Ukrainians or at least there are no Ukrainians and maybe there are no Russians and these territories in the gray zone so this is like as we can see the Russians continue their offensive operation and uh, as I understand during this week uh, if they don't have control uh, over this part of the village probably during the next week or this week they will try to establish 100% control and to force the Ukrainians to leave this area. As you can see a lot of updates during the previous night probably uh, the most important updates is that the Russians continue production, continue uh, like building more and more weapons. Yesterday we talked about the uh, supply of Ukraine with Western weapons, that the supplies are going down, uh, that uh, the uh, Western countries has almost uh, used uh, the funds for the Ukraine. And from the other side, we see that the Russians increased their production. For example, the Russians increased the production of tanks by seven times during this year, light armored vehicles by 4.5 uh, times, and production of some types of munition has increased by 60 times. So the Ukrainians don't have weapon at all the russians can just can lose maybe hundreds of tanks each month and not just like t64 t60 72 they can probably lose like t80 and t90 tanks hundreds of them each month and they will not even feel this so and this is the bad bad situation for the cleaners obviously furthermore the russians continue developing and upgrading their own weapon. We just discussed about the new type of weapon Lancet. The Russians have just improved the Lancet with uh, self-navigation equipment. Now the Russians have uh, developed Lancet one more time and they make them more dangerous and they make the Russian Lancet to bypass the old defense belts, old defense things around any type of tanks. Furthermore, the Russians start investing money in ground uh, like drones. On this video, we can see the Russian drone that can mine territory this is also like a Russian like a Russian production and we're gonna see more and more different types of weapon while the Ukrainians every single day are losing and losing the Western support uh, of course the Ukrainians still have some reserves some power to hold but the question is how long the Ukrainians are able to do this and that's it for this short video military summary channel reminds you condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day